Home Assistant 2025.4 is here and it's a great release this month with more improvements to the backup system, device hierarchy for energy management, several huge voice features and even more dashboard cards. First up though, we finally have a brand new auto-generated dashboard. So when you first install Home Assistant, you will get a dashboard that is automatically generated, which is fine in the beginning since you won't have that many devices, but will quickly grow and grow into something that's just unwieldy. And same goes for if you have ever went in and created a new dashboard, but now in this release, there is a new way of generating this auto dashboard, which is based on the areas feature, but works so much better and more differently than before. If we take a look at the old dashboard that I generated before updating, you can see that it's just how crazy it is and how unusable it is in its standard form, at least without going in and tweaking things. And another thing to note is how all of the cards use all of the old design language with no tile card in sight. However, if you go over to settings and then dashboards and add a new dashboard, you can see the areas dashboard down at the bottom, which is experimental in this release. But if you select that, you can see just how much of a positive difference there is with this new generation method, even when using the exact same Home Assistant system. It will generate a brand new dashboard based on areas, of course, and using all tile cards, which are the much more modern cards in Home Assistant. You will see it will even generate sub views for you on each heading that you can click into to see more of the entities in that room and it further splits them up inside of the room on a category basis, which is really cool. The sheer difference between the old style and the new style dashboard is actually really impressive. Now, obviously this is experimental and there is of course quite a few things missing at the moment, but just the big difference that has been made so far is really, really cool. And I'm certain that we're going to see some big changes in this over the coming little release as they roll out and add more features over the coming months. But if you want to start using this and start giving your feedback on what you think of it so far and what's missing and what you need, I'm sure the team would be very appreciative of that feedback. Now, another new dashboard feature this month is a brand new dashboard card, which is nice and simple, but actually a really cool addition, and that is the clock card. Plain and simple, displays the current time on your dashboard. You can change little things like the font size, time format, and whether to display seconds or not. But other than that, nice and simple, though it does beg the question, where's the date card? All right, next it's time for voice. And this release is a fantastic release for voice and the Home Assistant Preview Edition. The first one tackles quite a big problem with voice in Home Assistant when you are talking to an LLM, where quite often you will ask it to do something and it will come back, maybe do the action for you, but it will also ask you a follow-up question, which you could never answer because the conversation would just cut off, which means you'd have to say the wake word and start the whole process over again. Okay. It's too hot. What temperature do you want it to be? Uh, what? Okay. 21. The temperature has been set to 21 degrees C for both. The so the first one is a hugely requested feature, and that is that you can now have continued conversations with LLMs. So the voice pipeline will recognize when the LLM is asking you a question, and in turn, it will allow you to keep the conversation going without having to restart it with the wake word, which is amazing. And honestly, a real game changer for voice on the voice PE. And it's a big step forward into just having that real natural conversation going with your smart home. Okay. It's cold in here. What temperature would you like to set for the heating? Uh, 21. I've set the heating to 21 degrees. And so is this next feature, which is also a massive addition for the voice PE and other voice devices, which is that you can now trigger voice devices with an automation to ask you something, which you can then respond for it to take that action. So for example, say it's a really nice day and you open up your back doors to get some sun into your house, 
You could have an automation run that triggers your voice assistant to say, hey, I noticed that you opened the back door, but you've still got your heating on. Do you want me to turn that off to save energy? And then you can just respond saying yes, and it's gonna take all of the appropriate action. I noticed you left the back doors open, but the heating is still on. Do you want me to turn it off? Yes, please. The heating has been turned off. This one for me is maybe the most important voice feature that we've seen so far, or at least in quite a while, since it enables a much more proactive smart home rather than a reactive smart home. So I said before that I like having voice available in my smart home if I want to use it, but I'm not the biggest voice user personally because I prefer for things to happen automatically as much as possible. But this feature enables a whole new world, I think, of really powerful automations where your smart home can be proactively alerting or helping you to optimize everything in your smart home particularly around energy consumption, security and comfort. But my brain is kind of flying with loads of different ideas I've got around this new feature, as I'm sure yours is too. In fact, actually, drop, feel free to drop your best suggestions for how to use this feature down in the comments and what you're going to use it for. I think there'll be some really great discussion there. Next for voice, there is also the addition of a pre-announced sound with voice, which lets you play a little sound before the voice comes through. Instead of just like sitting there chilling on your phone, scrolling or whatever, and suddenly you're blasted with a voice telling you someone's at the front door. So it's just a little pre-warning sound before the actual voice comes through, which is Someone a nice is little touch door. if you want to use that feature. Finally for voice, that's right, we aren't done yet. There is now a new improved wizard for setting up voice in Home Assistant, which has been redesigned to show you how to make the right choice and show you what performance is gonna look like on your system and how supported your language is, which is a really nice little improvement to the user experience if you're setting things up for the first time. Nice. Another really cool improvement to the user experience also comes when you are setting up Home Assistant for the first time, which now gives you the option to restore your backup from Home Assistant Cloud, which is awesome. No longer will you need to set things up in Home Assistant fully and then log in and then restore that backup. You can just do it straight from the welcome screen now, which is gonna save a whole heap of hassle and it really improves the user experience. Next up is a really cool one for the energy dashboard and that is that you can now link energy devices to a parent device to create a hierarchy. So for example, if you monitor an energy circuit with say a CT clamp, but you also monitor an individual device that is also on that circuit, you can now link those together, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I don't have a great way to show you this on my system at the moment, I can see that this would be really useful for those of you with kind of full energy setups. So now you can go in and do that if you want to make use of that feature. Finally for the big stuff, the open AI integration can now be allowed to search the web if you allow it to under the open AI settings. And there's also a brand new service, service? service which can allow you to generate content, which looks like you can now use it to upload a file to and then use that file to generate content, either by describing what it sees, for example, or other use cases. Cool. As for little things this released, firstly, there have been huge improvements once again to the already big improvements made in the last release to the Smart Things integration, which will make a whole bunch of you really happy. There's a bunch of really cool template functions that you can now use to make your templates really, really awesome and take them even further and the light and switch template helper entities have now been moved into the UI. The real link integration adds a bunch of new smart sensors, firmware for the Zigbee coordinator in the Home Assistant Yellow and the ZBT1 can now be updated from the update section inside of Home Assistant. And finally, the OneDrive integration has a new action that allows you to upload files from Home Assistant straight to your OneDrive. 
In terms of new integrations, there is three new integrations this month, including a game server management one, which I haven't heard of before, but sounds really cool. A remote calendar integration, which is really nice if your calendar isn't supported natively and a Bosch alarm system to allow those of you with Bosch alarm systems in your smart home to integrate those into Home Assistant. As for backwards incompatible changes or breaking changes, the smallest list I can ever recall seeing with just a couple of entries here, the ones you will probably want to check out is the automation and script variables one, which is probably only applicable if you are quite an advanced user and have used variables inside of your automations. There's just a little bit of a change there to pay attention to and that is really it. A really great release this month. I can't believe they just dropped two of the biggest voice features into this release out of the blue. Really stoked on those as I'm sure you are too. The auto-generated dashboard one is also a huge improvement if you are a new user, so definitely check that out. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.